Hello LSA and friends. This is part two of the teaching, the formation of a new world. This is really a teaching and a prophetic exercise that is meant to uh, give us some understanding, some insight behind uh, in terms of how do the current events in, around this pandemic relate to the advancing, to the purpose, the unfolding purpose of God and the advancing kingdom of God. Remember we said in part one that if we had all of the information and the knowledge regarding science, politics around this pandemic, economics around this pandemic, but had no understanding of how the current events relate to the unfolding purposes of God and the advancing kingdom of God, then we would have failed. We also said in part one that um, we are required in the scriptures to actually do have a, a prophetic sense of what's going on around us. We made the example of the Magi who, who, who saw the star and the, the word, that word see meaning to, to see with perception, to see with understanding. It's not talking about a casual perusal or, or browsing of the events, but it really is talking about an intent uh, um, uh, observation of what is taking place uh, with the intent to understand how it relates to the purposes of God. We also saw the sons of Issachar who understood uh, uh, the events around the political tension between uh, Saul and David. And they knew what was the positioning of God inside of that situation and what was then supposed to be their contribution in the process. And because of that, they were able to enforce or to enact, the, 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 to execute the will of God. And church inside of this pandemic is also required, yes, on the one hand, to understand the, the, this natural phenomenon from a scientific point of view, the politics, the economics, um, uh, how it impacts on our uh, on day-to-day -day culture, uh, cultural living, but at the same time we are actually meant to understand the, the relationship or the impact, the relationship between the current events and the unfolding purpose of God. And that's what really we're doing inside of this as we teach on the formation of, of the new world. And we basing this on 2 Peter chapter 3, and we read in part 1 from in 2 Peter chapter 3 from verses 3 to 14. Uh, I'm going to read the same scripture, but only from verse 10, uh, inside of this from verse 10 um, uh, to about verse 13. Uh, let's read this together. If you have your Bible, please. 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 10 uh, to 13. But the day, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to, be, to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. In, verse, in part one of this teaching, uh, we identified four themes that are, I think, important foundations upon which you can you know, develop some prophetic perspective. Uh, is the fact that the four themes um, uh, that we identified are the fact that we see the constancy of the Word of God, the phrase, by the same word, that same word that creates destroys and renews things. So the constancy of the Word of God and the fact that the Word of God is a creative force behind life. The second theme that we did identify was that the Word of God is the, is the design behind the formation of the order of human, humanity, of the order of the cosmos. And the word cosmos, which is the English word world, which is the English word world, uh, uh, is a word that means uh, orderly arrangement. Um, so the thing that holds life together is not the material things. I made the example of a family in part one of this teaching. And I was saying that uh, in, a, in, a, in a family situation, what holds family together is essentially it's not your house, it's not your car. Those things are great and they're important. But what holds family together are the invisible principles like love, honor, respect, sense of family and community, all of those things. And when those things are violated in one way or another, that family will crumble. We know this. So even if you have a house, even if you have a car, so the same applies 
you can apply the same principle on a, on a bigger macro scale of the nations of the earth. What holds the nations together is not, is not material things. It's not our oceans and mountains and, and all of the material stuff that we may love about our nation. But what holds the nation together are principles like equity, justice, honor, all of those things, loving your neighbor as yourself. Those, those principles are the design of creation. They are the expression of the logos of God, of the word of God. Remember we said in part one, the word of God is not script or text. That word, word means the expression of God's intent, of God's thoughts, of God's discourse, in other words, of, of God's ideas about how life should be. And, and, so, um, and, and those are the things that hold life together. You get this picture when you read Proverbs chapter 8 and see that there is behind, the, behind the, what we see as material earth, there are invisible uh, principles that hold life together. The third theme that we identified in part one of this teaching is that the word of God is a moral compass. It establishes righteousness. It destroys evil. The word of God is moral. It is the cardinal reference point. It is the, it is the moral compass of God. It establishes righteousness. It destroys evil. And the fourth theme that we identified from part one is the fact that in the, in the process of the word of God, we see this cycle of creation where the word creates it destroys and then it renews. So, so God will destroy. And the reference in 2 Peter 3 is this is the is the is the is the generation of Noah. This uh, where there was wickedness and immorality, and God, 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 God did not like what, what he saw. In fact, one of the few times we see God repenting, feeling sorry for having created human human beings. And, uh, and, uh, but we know the story of how God judged that generation. And, and, uh, but again, he had Noah as a prophet who spoke and was appealing to that generation to repent and to come back to righteous ways. Um, and so, so God destroys, but God, because God is redemptive, he also renews, he renews. There's always in the destruction process, there will always be this process of renewal. Now, the, the, the other thing then I, that I want to bring in this part two of this teaching of the formation of a, of, a, of a new world is the concept of the coming of the Lord or of the coming of the day of the Lord. It's, it's a, that's a prophetic phrase. You find it often in scriptures, prophets talk about the day of the Lord and day of the Lord will do this and that. Different prophets uh, talk about the day of the Lord. And uh, it's not just an Old Testament phenomenon. It's Peter's referring to the day of the Lord, the, the, the day of the Lord. And when we come, we're talking about the coming of the day of the Lord or the coming of the Lord, we're not talking about the ultimate return of the Lord, which is a biblical reality. It's a doctrinal fact that God will come. Jesus will come back, the second coming of the Lord. But that's, that's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about the ultimate return of the Lord to wrap up this mortal order of human life. Remember, we fell into this mortal order. We were created as immortal humans. We fell into, into mortality because of sin. And Jesus has come, he's died for us, he's redeemed us. Our spirits have been regenerated and redeemed, but we're still locked in mortal bodies. We, we still suffer from disease and we still die. The plan of salvation in the timeline is that ultimately God must deal with death. In other words, he must restore us back to immortality. So we know that Jesus will come back and bring this mortal order to an end. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the progressive, current and progressive coming of the Lord. So the idea of God's coming is not only ultimate in terms of this that ultimate event when it comes back, it is also progressive. Number one, we know that the historical Jesus arrived here on earth. In Luke chapter 19, he is approaching the city of Jerusalem and, and he laments over the city because the city did not recognize his coming. That was the reality of God coming upon the city, upon an order, upon an establishment, uh, a colony, this colony, colony of Caesar. Um, that had, you know, its own issues and, and problems. They did not recognize the Messiah. They did not recognize the Christ. That was the coming of the Lord. But we also know that God comes in our lives and in our, in our personal circumstances. God comes through His Spirit in our lives and in, in our personal circumstances. We know this, that God comes in our lives and in our personal circumstances. 
But we also know in the history of the church that God has visited the church over, you know, from time to time by his spirit and by his truth. That in itself was the coming of the Lord. God has visited the church by his spirit and by his truth. And he's often, you know, injected life into the church by his spirit and by his truth. That in itself was the coming of the Lord. But also the purpose of God arrives um, uh, uh, upon us and upon the earth uh, progressively. The purpose of God arrives upon the earth progressively. And then we know, obviously, that ultimately the Lord will come back, will return uh, uh, to the earth to, to wrap up this mortal order. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it, I want to... Now start to identify in this part two some, some more themes, um, uh, uh, principles that, that we need to identify and understand and process inside of some of the prophetic realities at play inside of this pandemic. In verse 10, in 2 Peter 3, it talks about God will come like a thief. Now the whole idea, it does not say that he's a thief, but it does say that he will come like a thief. So it uses the analogy of a guy coming in midnight, you know, coming to steal. And thieves are not stupid people. They, they study us, they understand the, the lifestyle and the trends and the movement. And they know, you know, which part of the night to come when you most likely are in deep sleep. They understand all of those things. The idea inside of this uh, metaphor or analogy is the fact that the coming of the Lord will, will, will be unexpected, will be sudden. And it will transcend human intelligence and human insight. I think, in a sense, this pandemic has been like that. We, I remember I stood in front of our church on January 5th, on Sunday, January 5th, and I pulled a slide, a, a collection of events that were taking place. There were uh, things taking place ranging from the military situations to um, uh, sexual abuses, all kinds of situations that were taking place. And the coronavirus was just one of them. I think I, I pulled about 10 um, uh, events that were taking place at the time. Coronavirus was just one of the, of the 10. Uh, this was January, January 5th, Sunday, January 5th um, in 20, this year. A couple of months later, the world has changed. And so the suddenness of the coming, the suddenness of the coming of the Lord, it transcends our intelligence. It transcends our, our, our insight, all of the, intel, even literally, the, I mean, it transcends the literal intelligence uh, systems of the nations. You know, we know that all nations have intelligence operations. They gather information. Uh, uh, but how many presidents and prime, prime ministers stood beginning of this year and said, there's a pandemic coming. We need to get ready. Um, it was sudden. It came to us in a sudden way. That's the first thing that we see in verse 10. In verse 12, we see another reality there in this process of the formation of, of a new world. The nature of the coming of the Lord to us is that number one, it comes um, uh, like a, he comes like a thief. In other words, transcends, it overwhelms human intelligence. But the second thing is that the coming of the Lord produces the, the disappearance of, 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 of elements of creation. It says the heavens will disappear in verse 12. The coming of the Lord, in other words, triggers the extinction process. Things go extinct when God interacts with the earth or when the purposes of God interact with the earth, things go extinct. And we're talking here about spheres of life. We're talking here about industries. We're talking here about realities of life, ways of life. We talk about ideas, even ideologies. There are ideologies and ideas that have been tested by this pandemic that is at play before us right now. People's ideas are being changed. Uh, people's uh, uh, understanding of reality um, is being changed because of this pandemic. And so we, there is the, the second reality inside of this uh, prophetic process of the formation of a new world is the disappearance of elements, is the disappearance of realities. The heavens will disappear. Remember, we're not talking about the ultimate coming of the Lord here. We are talking about the progressive, current progressive interaction between the purpose of God and the earth. When the purpose of God hits the earth, it causes a disappearance of, 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 of elements. And we're going to come back to that a little later. The third thing that we see inside of the, 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 the coming of the Lord process and the formation of a new world is that 
not only do the heavens disappear, the elements also get destroyed. The elements get destroyed. The word elements is the word that means arrangements. 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 The arrangements of the earth. That word destroyed means to unravel. And so literally that phrase, the elements will be destroyed, literally means that the arrangements of the earth will begin to unravel. There will be this disintegration of the elements of the earth, um, or of the arrangements of the earth. And whether these are arrangements of economics, of politics, um, inside of the pandemic and inside of the lockdown, they, we are having to revisit principles like the so social contract between the government and its citizens. Uh, you know, citizens are being, um, uh, 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 you know, working, they are waking, they are, you know, coming back to a, a state of activity, of activism of some form, of some kind, um, as, as they begin to interact with the government to try and understand and to have views and to exchange views and, and to have an, an opinion. Uh, no longer are we lost in our own middle classness. And just in the normal routines of life and, and and not concerned about what's happening around. We are now in the lockdown, in the pandemic, are very concerned about what decisions our government's taking, what decisions our presidents and prime ministers taking. So there is the unraveling of arrangements. There is a changing of arrangements, of systems, of, of, of cultural or, you know, systems, of social systems, of economic systems, of, of very, you know, um, idea of ways of doing business. Uh, travel has been banned and, and the idea of traveling to conferences and, and there is the emergence of technology and the usage um, uh, there is a technological revolution that we are seeing inside of this pandemic. And that's a very, very significant thing in the elements being destroyed or the arrangements of life being destroyed. The next thing that we're seeing that happens when the God, when, with the coming of the day of the Lord is that ultimately there must be a new home of righteousness in verse 13. The word righteousness here means equity of character and action equity of character and action. Now, ultimately, that's where nations get tested. And even the church itself, in terms of whether it's able to walk in the righteousness of God, in God's equity, both in terms of the construct of life and in terms of our actions. That is the core issue. The core issue, as it was with the generation of Noah, that God was really confronting the immorality, the lack of righteousness that constituted the day. And, and, and right now, uh, we have to think about the things that have always been with us. Things like the poor, you know, the poor and, and, and what happens with the poor. We are now you know, getting a renewed sense of justice inside of our own hearts. As we look at our television screens, watching the news and seeing uh, the poor and people who are homeless, they, there, is a, there is a revival of, of, of justice within our own hearts. There is a provocation from God and the church has to be provoked by God. Uh, the nations of the earth has to, have to be provoked by God inside of, inside of this time. As we move to building a home of righteousness. We want a, a new home of righteousness in South Africa. We want a new home of righteousness across the nations of the earth. We want a, a home of righteousness, a home of equity, in other words, a home of, of justice, in other words. That word righteousness means all of those things. It means equity, the equity of God, the, the justice of God, not the justice of man, not, 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 not justice um, as defined by our own humanistic political ideas. But we're talking really about the justice of God, uh, the righteousness of God has to be established. And so the whole process, the whole drive, why God is, is coming like a thief, is, is overwhelming the intelligence of men and why the elements are disappearing. There's a disappearance and why the, the elements are being destroyed or the arrangements of life are unraveling uh, is that we ultimately have to produce the, the righteousness of God, the righteousness of God. And so the four realities that we're seeing that happen as God, with the coming of the Lord is that God will come like a thief in verse 10. The heavens will disappear in verse 12. The elements or the arrangements of life will unravel in verse 12. And there will be a new home of righteousness in verse 13. Now I want to focus on the heavens disappearing 
the disappearance of elements. Uh, remember, this is a prophetic interpretation of what's going on. Um, uh, and so let's not think about the ultimate coming of the Lord. Let's think about what's happening right now before us. I want to talk about the, the, heaven, the heavens disappearing, the disappearance of elements in life, which is what I call the process of extinction. Things going extinct. This is absolutely powerful, powerful stuff. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. That's what this verse says in verse 10. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. What this tells us is that whenever the, the purpose of God collides with the earth, it, it tends to produce some form of uh, uh, extinction in life. Things go extinct. When God, when the purpose of God hits the earth on a massive scale, it, 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 it produces some form of extinction. We see this uh, with the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. We see this with the generation of, of, of Noah um, in, in different, um, uh, in, you know, just different realities. We see this ultimately with the death of Jesus Christ, that redemptive act of God. Uh, it, 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 it made the entire system of Moses, an entire system of law to go extinct. A reality was changed by God. And so whenever massive uh, purpose of God hits the earth, there will always be this process of extinction. The scripture that I want to bring to mind uh, uh, to you saints is the one in the vision of the king of Babylon, which was interpreted by, by the prophet Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, verses 29 to 45. Is that the inside of the scripture, Daniel chapter 2, verses 29 to 45, the rock strikes the human statue. The human statue is a collection of kingdoms. It is a history um, of political systems. That's what it is. To the end of time. Uh, from the days of Nebuchadnezzar to the end of time. That's what it is. But we see this rock, the kingdom of God, striking the human statue. Again, we, we see the kingdom of God colliding with political systems, striking the human statue. And when that happens, is that the statue goes extinct. It disappears. Realities change. Realities change. I'm not here talking about advocating revolution against uh, 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 you know, nation states. I'm talking about. I'm talking about systems. I'm talking about realities and arrangements uh, changing. That's what I am talking about. Systems that uh, and 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 forces that that want to influence the structure of life. That's what the kingdom of God does, and that's a powerful metaphor of how when the kingdom of God, when this rock strikes the human statue, the human statue disappears. Extension. Extension. But in Revelation chapter twenty-one is another. A powerful metaphor for us that we see there uh, in Revelation 21 verse 1. Again, we're not reading these scriptures in terms of the ultimate coming of the Lord. We're reading these scriptures in terms of their application in the now for us living in 2020. Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I'm reading these scriptures from the NIV. There was no longer any sea. Again, the Apostle John is seeing and is looking and he sees that in the new realities of God, certain things have gone extinct. I was thinking about the reality of a world or a global map in which there is no more sea. That's a powerful, powerful me metaphor. Uh, because in the removal of the sea, that would mean that you no longer have continents. What we regard as continents, so Africa, South America, North America, Europe, etc., etc., uh, Asia, you know, Australasia, uh, those, those continents no longer exist. So in the absence of the sea, you have one new humanity. What is God saying to us about that prophetic metaphor is that, is that the, 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 the city of God, which I call a civilization of God, is... It talks about the city of God, and, and the city is not a, a literal city, just as the, the, the woman is not a literal woman. The city was like a, a woman who was beautiful. And we know that, you know, uh, we, we cannot have a doctrinal interpretation where we think of a woman as literal. These are metaphors. Uh, the city comes down in Revelation 21. 
um, um, and, and the city is a civilization of God. It is the order of, rea- of, of life that has been established in the kingdom of God. That has to be established by the church. Actually, the church is known in the scriptures as the city of God. You are the city of God in the midst of the earth, Matthew 5, 14. And that's a whole teaching all by itself. But the powerful metaphor of the earth, a global map without the sea, means that we are removing the idea of continents. Well, we are changing the idea of global politics. Inside of this pandemic, what's happening is that even though nations have locked down, have gone back to, you know, a nationalistic reality, but because of technology and social media, uh, humanity is 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 becoming more and more one. We're moving into a space of oneness, and so therefore the environment in which we have to establish the kingdom of God is one in which um, uh, uh, the, the the idea of 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 continents of 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 of, of global discrimination is removed. And where we establish the realities of one new humanity, um, which the scripture uh, outlines in, in Ephesians 2 verses 14 to 16. Very, 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 very powerful. So the collision of, between the purpose of God and the earth produces this extension process. And this extension process is what I call, or it further, the, the, the collision between the purpose of God and the earth produces the extension process, out of which we get what I call a new ecology, a new ecology, a new ecology. So in Revelation 21, we are seeing a new ecology. Imagine a world in which there is no sea. That, that, that means lifestyle change. There is no going to the beach. There, there is no, you know, uh, uh, sea, uh, you know, rela- uh, industry that relates to marine life. Uh, no longer, you know, uh, is no longer a reality in that world. Um, lifestyles are changed. Um, um, there's some of the things that we define uh, a city like Devon, which is a, a coastal city, uh, would would not be a reality anymore. I remember, I'm talking about this in a metaphorical sense, and and I'm really talking about the fact that in the pandemic, there is going to be the extinction of realities that we have known before and that in the new world that we're stepping into we're stepping into what i call a new ecology church has to understand these things and be ready for these things in order to be able to advance the purpose of god this word ecology talks about the interrelationship of elements of life and their environment the interrelationship of elements of life and their environment the process of of, of ecology or ecology is a process by which we regulate life, the balance of life, and all of the elements that we see and that we don't see. Ecology is a powerful phenomenon in creation. It's a very, very important issue. So when we talk about a new ecology, we're talking about a situation in which God has removed certain corrupted elements in in the system of life and has replaced them with uh, new elements and realities. And the idea behind that is so that we can create new realities, new atmosphere, a new atmosphere. There is a, a renewal of, of things and that we, that we are told about in 2 Peter chapter 3. So God removes the old corrupted elements and he establishes new elements. And why he does that is so that there can be new realities. Remember, there are certain realities of the kingdom that we can never be able to build in the context of the old structures of life. There are things we can only dream, but they will never be able to build in the context of the old structures of life. So new ecology means new ways of doing life. New ecology means refined and reformed ways of being and of doing church. The church itself is being changed by God. The the, the how we do church as we struggle in the lockdown, as we wrestle with the idea of not being able to meet, there are certain principles that are being highlighted by God in the midst of that. The lockdown and and the and the and the and the and the and the pandemic will pass, but those principles will be highlighted, and that those will become our new ecology. New ecology is new processes of doing politics and 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 new processes of citizenship. Politics is going to change after this. We're going to see citizens 
waking up and and taking their their stand in the cycle of politics uh, so that they're no longer just spectators new ways of doing business and even new schooling models uh, are most likely going to happen uh, inside of this new in the formation of this new ecology that god is taking us through new ecology ultimately seeks to establish this home of righteousness this home of equity and the people of god the saints of god have to give themselves to that process and really push uh, uh, as as you know powered by the holy spirit to bring about this new home of righteousness saints church i want to submit to you that god is planting us into a new ecology of his purposes god is planting us into a new ecology of his purposes and i hope that this will 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 inspire us and encourage us in the midst of these difficult times this is part two of uh, of the formation of of a new world and um, we will you know you know take this further in part three and expand on certain principles thank you mm-hmm.